Electricity meter. Sangamo Western S two hundred point three one. What we're looking at there then is another electricity meter made by Sangamo Western. This one has had a bit of an unfortunate incident on its way here. That being the postal service decided to use it like a football, and upon it arriving, it was pretty broken up and smashed to pieces, and remained in a bag. Uh, destined to be a spares meter and it remained in that bag stored away in a cupboard for about four years and then what happened was as I received a time switch which is also made by Sangamo and that had problems so I decided to break it down for spares upon breaking it down for spares I actually discovered that the front case on those time switches is very similar to the case that you get on those electricity meters and I tried to fit it on there but it wouldn't go so a small amount of modification and we managed to get it to fit onto the front of that electricity meter so therefore it was fixed a little bit later on after that I decided to give it a accuracy test considering it had been knocked and kicked about I was not expecting the accuracy to be there anymore and it might have even needed adjusting or the meter would not have functioned altogether it turns out that this one despite being knocked and kicked about is still accurate the characteristics for this one then is 240 volts single phase to wire 50 hertz alternation frequency 20 to 80 amps loading capacity the wheel speed on this one is 166 and two-third revolutions per kilowatt hour class 2 and this one utilizes the float on magnetic bearing this basically means that the load wheel inside there sits on a magnetic cushion and therefore there's very minimal or no surface contact so therefore the meter can maintain its accuracy over a very long time because of that the Sangamo Western S200.31 is only one of two instruments made by Sangamo Western that have been awarded the 35 year calibration period the other instrument is the S200.38 let's zoom in on it then and have a look There's the specification plate then. This one, when I received it, it didn't have any anti-tamper seals on it. So the only markings I've got in there to indicate anything at all is what's been embossed into the specification plate, which is right at the bottom in the centre there. And it says AS43069. Interestingly, when I received this from the person that I bought it from, I obviously unpackaged it and found that, uh, yes, the Postal Service had have used it like a football. So I complained to the person that sent it, and I know that they had another one. And so what they'd done was to discontinue the sale of that one and send that to me as a replacement. That one received, uh, I received that okay. It was you know arrived in absolute bomb proof packaging which he should have done in the first place and so therefore I've got two of those instruments the other one is in its original condition it doesn't have a clear plastic front case on it like that mainly because that clear plastic front case is from a time switch the time switch in question it is a broken down and dismantled Sangamo Q345 like I say, those time switch cases, they don't fit readily onto those instruments. You do have to modify them a little bit to get them to go on there.
with this one then you can see the load wheel in the center there and surrounding it is a frame and there's an accuracy magnet above and below that you can't see the accuracy magnets below the load wheel because the specification plate is in the way there is however a little aperture in the specification plate and as you can see either side of that little aperture it says FL which is full load and to the left we've got S and to the right we've got F for speeding it up and slowing it down accordingly in order to adjust the accuracy and inside there is a little adjusting nut the two screws either side are just there to hold on the specification plate just there is where it was manufactured Sangamo Western Limited, Enfield, Middlesex and England if this camera tripod will behave there it is the later S200.31 instruments were made in Felixstowe, Suffolk and England. This is one of the earlier ones, so this one's made in Enfield, Middlesex and England. Showing there is the Floton logo, Floton Magnetic Bearing, which is in reference to the load wheel. And like I say... The load wheel in this one sits on a magnetic uh, cushion and therefore maintains its accuracy over a very long time. There's the load wheel speed right there. 166 and two third revs per kilowatt hour. There is evidence in this one of it taking a knock and a bump. There's some scratches uh, dug into the metal work there. And that is where the front got kicked in and glass from the window was in, uh, pummeled into that and therefore it's left cuts and scratches. And just above that uh, there's a couple of nice big meaty scratches there where uh, some glass is dug in and scuffed. So it's obviously that the, the uh, as the glass broke it would then dug in and... Well, you know, the poor instrument has had a bit of a rough ride on the way here. Amazingly though, despite being knocked and kicked about, it's still accurate. A little bit later on then, what I should be doing is getting my other S200.31. And we should get that up in front of the camera as well. And you can have a look at that one. Also what I would like to do is get this one in front of the camera again and give it another accuracy test just to see that it's holding its accuracy over the time that I've had it. And also another video would be for me to wire that up on video and get the load wheel to go around in net and register a load. This is uh, mainly for two reasons and that is to do with the readout on that. It's a little tricky to read. You can see the five white zeros there, but there are also two red zeros in there. There they are. Now, the way this one works is the right hand red zero is actually fractions of a kilowatt hour. And those little marks on there are increments of 0 0.02. And the left hand red zero is whole kilowatt hours and the way that works is that slowly creeps up when it comes back around to zero that red zero there which would have been slowly advancing up suddenly rapidly flicks back over to a zero and then that other zero which is to the left there which is white in color that would suddenly jump to one thus the meter would then register 10 kilowatt hours again we can show that in another video on another day when we power this up we can get it whizzing up in there and we can also watch the load wheel go round I'd like to say thanks for tuning in to watch this one and like I say there will be another video on this instrument another time and we should get it powered up and also carry out an accuracy test on it to see if it has still maintained its accuracy over the time that I've had it despite being taken uh, you know, having a bit of a bump and a knock and being used as a football. 
for now on this one then thanks for watching